Zach Wilson had himself a day in the worst possible way. Welcome to Pan Am Football. I'm Max Dean. You can find me on Twitter at Pan Am Football. And today, I'm going to break down every Zach Wilson interception from Week 2 against the Patriots. We're going to talk about coverages, routes, protections, and rushes. And of course, the decision-making processes as well. So this is all my interpretation, but I explain basically exactly what I think happened for you. If you like what you see, throw a like my way and hit subscribe. I'm going to be doing a film room every single week uh, for whatever topic I want to cover. And then you can also vote on an additional video every single week as well if you want to join the Patreon. So there is a link for that in the description below. And let's jump right into it. By the way, I hate Red Bull, but desperate times call for desperate measures. This is now the Tired Dad Football Show. All right, we're going to watch it twice, once in the All-22, once in the end zone cam, and then I'll break it down. So it's a play-action pass, it's tipped, and then intercepted by the same player who tipped it. I think it's J.C. Jackson there. Um, now in the end zone, play-action, delayed blitzer, forces a bad throw, and the pick. So now I'm going to break it down for you. Start by... Looking at the tight end coming across the formation, it shows that it's man coverage. The linebacker goes with him. We have a safety over the top. Then we have three interior rushers and two edge players, both outside linebackers. And then we only have three routes, the deep, the intermediate, and the check down. Then that motion tight end slides back across the formation to block. His defender covers the running back, and the mic goes on a delayed blitz up the A gap. So what I'm pretty sure happens is Wilson comes out of his play action. He expected that linebacker to be following the running back. But instead, he's right in his face. So let's watch it from the other angle. So we're going to have the tight end come across. We have the defender follow. We've got our man coverage. We have essentially what's max protect. So we've got only five guys coming and seven protectors. So once the play action starts here, this is what Zach Wilson thinks he's looking at. So he's got the mic coming down to cover the running back and the other defender crossing the formation to follow the possible route for the tight end. But what he actually has is that defender that originally followed the tight end is going to take the running back. So by the time he turns around, the defender is already right in his face. Uh, he shouldn't be throwing to Davis at all, but if he did, he'd have to lead him at least a little bit. Um, so he throws it behind him. It's tipped up and picked. He should have tried to hit the flat, but it is what it is. And it's an inter interception on the second offensive play for the Jets. So interception number two is actually a really simple play action concept. It's going to be a bootleg off of the play action. And then you're going to have uh, the tight end go for a deep corner. You're going to have Corey Davis cross the middle of the field. And then you're going to have Elijah Moore dragging across the line of scrimmage to get open in the flat. So it's a three level concept. So you're supposed to read high low generally. So this play is actually developing really well. And a big part of it is because Elijah Moore is there in the flat and the defense knows he's a threat. I'm sure that they are aware of what he can do. So the fact that Zach looks at him actually pulls two defenders a little bit off their man. And there are actually three guys open when Zach goes to throw here. The only issue is that the, the intermediate route, which is what he chose, was the hardest hit to hit, the most risky. Uh, and an errant throw ended up causing another interception. So let's look at the play action right here. It works well. You've got mismatches now. Corey Davis is basically being covered by number eight, the linebacker. That's a mismatch. Corey, uh, I mean, Elijah Moore is basically running free to the flat. That edge defender who could uh, have knocked him off his route, bit too hard on the play action. There's no way he's reversing field. And then you've got the tight end running deep. So the tight end is open. It's a tough throw, but I know Zach Wilson can make it if he's having a good day. Corey Davis is open too. He drifts back to the ball. That's good. But Elijah Moore is really where you want to hit this. Um, give him a chance to make a play and just don't risk it. And he throws too high. Corey should catch it, but he tips it up and it's another pick. So ultimately, is it the worst decision ever? No, but it's the wrong one. And pick number three, you have motion from Berrios in the backfield to prove that it's man coverage. And it's a four route concept and one is the primary read. So as Berrios jets behind the line of scrimmage, this defender is supposed to cover this route that he's running. But the idea is that the offensive player number eight running this route and the defensive player covering him are going to essentially pick off that player. For reasons I cannot explain, he comes off that, throws late to the corner route, 
and it's just it's like a layup interception so let's look at the eyes here so the motion shows its man coverage he's going to look at that route first and for whatever reason he's going to come off of it then look at the center and then look at the corner and the ball should already be out by now i do not understand why he came off the first one and then it's just it's too easy it's way too late it's way too late all right, for pick number four, watch these two players carefully. Berrios moves through the backfield. It indicates zone coverage since no one moves with him. Wilson reads cover two and expects a four-man rush. Now, this is a good thing because the Jets have called a cover two beater. They have Elijah Moore on an outside release go route that takes the safety deep and then Corey Davis on a deep out. So normally this would beat cover two. You'd want to hit Corey Davis on the out route. However, what Belichick does is runs a trap zone coverage where the right outside edge rusher actually drops into zone coverage in the flat. This allows the zone defenders on the right defensive side to drop deeper. Now, Wilson does realize this, which is why he doesn't throw the ball to Corey Davis, but he also notices that there is pressure coming from the offensive right side. He's even being held, and so he panics and chucks the ball to Elijah Moore. Now, Interestingly, Elijah Moore seems to have realized also that this coverage is being run, decides to freewheel and try and run his own version of a cover two beater uh, where he actually stops and comes back. And so Wilson should never have thrown this ball. So it actually doesn't really matter that Elijah Moore ran the wrong route per se. Um, the only difference is that he would have at least been able to have contested it and maybe force an incompletion or get a pass interference penalty. So Elijah Moore switches up his route, but it doesn't matter. It's still the wrong decision by Zach Wilson. So I'm going to let you see it play out now, and then we'll watch it from the end zone cam. So watch the secondary. Elijah Moore is running deep, and then he breaks it off, and the ball is just going to exactly where he would have been. Like I said, it's still a bad decision. But he would have been there to break it up or maybe if they were extremely lucky, get a pass interference call on the defense. From this angle, I'm not going to rehash any of the zones. You've already seen those. But let's take a look at the line in the rush. The right end drops off, so the left tackle not blocking anyone is fine. The left guard in the center do a good job of double teaming the tackle. Now, the right guard and the right tackle should both be hitting that uh, defensive tackle. And the running back and the tight end should be blocking the left end. You should not have a tight end one-on-one -on -one against an edge rusher. That's bad. That running back should be helping out there. So, of course, the tight end gets beat like a drum and holds, and Zach Wilson throws a bad pass. It's a bad decision, but that is a bad protection by the running back right there. At least that's the way that I see it. So, those are your four picks for Zach Wilson. So, I, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I had a lot of fun putting it together. Uh, because I guess I'm a masochistic Jets fan. But if you are like me, or you are a fan of a divisional rival, and you just like watching the Jets suffer, throw a like my way. I, I appreciate it. Now, uh, basically, I put the first pick on Wilson. Almost totally. The second one, I put a little on Wilson, but really mostly on Corey Davis. The third one... I put 100% on Wilson. I don't know what he was thinking there. And the fourth one, it's a little of everybody. I put that on Elijah Moore. I put it on Zach Wilson. I put it on Ty Johnson, the running back. And I put it on Greg Van Roten for not double teaming that uh, the left defensive tackle there. So that's basically my blame assignment and how I feel about how everything went down. If you have any comments or you disagree, uh, let me know. And again, find me on Twitter at Pan Am Football. We'll see you all next week.